launch vehicle that launches crew. And that review is still in front of us. Mike's got some reviews scheduled in uh, the middle part of July. I have some reviews right after his. And then we'll head up to the launch on the 23rd. But from an overall space station standpoint, it seems prudent to just keep moving forward and keep doing what we're supposed to do in space, and that's to do the research. And I think it's really important for the space station. We're really learning a lot now, and, and we're really starting to turn a a new page in doing research and providing data back to folks here on the Earth. So we need to keep doing that and keep moving forward. So I'll, I'll see if Mike wants to add anything else. Well, I would just add, like Gerst, I mean, we fly space station not not just to study the human's ability to survive in a microgravity environment uh, in preparation for exploration, which is very important, but we're there to do research uh, across the board. Uh, and uh, so therefore, uh, the question we ask ourselves every day is, is, is the system able to support the crew? Uh, if the system's able to support the crew, then we, then we get on with doing the job at hand, which is research. So the system is well able to support the crew, as I told you beforehand. We have been to well into October, probably late October, if nothing else flew. Uh, we have uh, plenty of opportunity for resources to come to ISS to keep the crew uh, going, and uh, in and so therefore we should continue because without the crew then we can't get our logistics vehicles there with a limited crew we have a very difficult time doing some of the repairs to do to keep the systems going so we can do the research we're not in a position today to uh, to stand down on crew flights in fact we're quite healthy on orbit um, and but we're always in a safe position if the time comes and we decide we don't have the logistics to support the crew we always have a vehicle there that can bring them home safely, and we would certainly do that. But we're not even close to that kind of conversation today, given the logistics we have on board. We'll take one more question on the phone, then come back to the room. Uh, Ken Chang of the New York Times. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Um, I, Elon tweeted that it looked like it was an overpressurization in the second stage oxygen tank, and it looked like there was two events. There was a cloud, and then it descends I was wondering if you can provide any more details. I'm sorry, I don't have any more data than that. Um, I've got teams of folks looking at every possible uh, telemetry, or every possible piece of telemetry and data. Um, I just, I don't want to speculate as to what happened. We did have, as I mentioned in my opening, we did have a pressurization event on the second stage. Uh, oh, so root cause of that. Um, so th that's all we've got, sorry. Elon tweeted it, that's all I know. Uh, Jason Ryan from SpaceFlightInsider.com. Earlier this month, the Senate Appropriations Committee voted to uh, cut the commercial crew budget, and I was hoping either Gerst or maybe Mike could ask the question, answer the question of whether or not this might play for those members who made this vote, uh, give them uh, argument, basically ammo for their argument. Yeah, I can take a shot at that and, and try to answer. Again, I think it's really important in this business that um, we keep moving forward. And, and so when I look at the, the budget situation, we really need full funding for crew. Um, there's a technical problem and then there's a financial problem. And I can guarantee you that if what we're trying to do is very, very difficult technically. And, and you've seen that through the losses of three spacecraft from three different providers, you know, from, from Orbital, from the Russian government, and then now from SpaceX. That shows you how difficult this technical problem is. And we really need funding at the level, level we requested at to let that technical work keep moving forward. When we get cut back in funding, then that slows down the technical work or compresses the amount of technical work that needs to be done in the amount of time. And we want to get a redundant capability to deliver crew to space as soon as we can get that so we're not solely dependent upon the Russians. So we need that funding at the level we've requested so we can get that work moving forward. If we don't get the funding, we can't do the technical work. The technical work gets delayed or compressed, and this environment is not conducive to letting us compress or delay technical work. We need time to work the technical items. We need the time to work the, the difficult uh, engineering problems in front of us. And to do that, we need the funding at the levels we need it. So we need to fund at that right level between the, the funding and the technical work to match them. And, and the plan that we've provided um, through the, the budget process is what we need in 16. We need that full funding to keep 
keep Nick work moving forward. It's not right to delay from a funding standpoint and think he'll catch up later technically. We really need to keep moving forward technically, and to do that, we need the funding level we requested. Thank you. Next question over here. Uh, Dan Billow from WESH-TV. Uh, I'd like to address uh, my question both to Gwen Shotwell and Bill Gerstenmeyer and request uh, an answer from both of you on this, if I may. Uh, was a destruct signal uh, sent from the ground or received by the launch vehicle after the uh, initial breakup began? I don't believe there was a destruct signal, uh, but I will follow up on that. Um, I've heard no indication that there was a, a destruct signal. Okay, we'll take one more in the room and then go back to the phone. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com uh, with a question for Michael Suffredini. Um, given that you do have a progress going up on Friday, is there anything from this flight, a uh, replacement part from this flight, or anything um, of priority that you would try to rush to Florida to get on board if that is a possibility? And there was mention at the start of a water filtration issue on, on the station um, that you were flying a replacement bed. Uh, is that something that you might want to get on the station sooner, and can you give a few more details about what that issue is? Sure, I can address both. Uh, like I said, the, the, our Russian colleagues have loaded the progress up with food and water and other crew provisions, um, and uh, and that's really very important to us uh, as a collective, and so for us, they're, they're in good shape. Um, I can't think of anything uh, off the top of my head that is so important that we'd want to rush it. Uh, to our Russian colleagues. Um, I'm sur sure we'll talk about it here in the next few hours, see if there's anything there we'd like to do. It would have to be small, but overall we're in very good shape on orbit, and so um, there's nothing I can think of right now that, that we'd want to go get on the, on the progress at this point. Um, to answer your question about water uh, filtration, yes, on orbit um, we have a water filtration system, and we monitor its uh, capability by uh, checking the water constituents on a regular basis. Uh, the multi-filtration beds we have in the water processor today are starting to get full, uh, as indicated by the measurements we've been taking lately. Um, when it starts to get full, we take water samples and bring them home to understand a specific, specifically what the constituents are. The constituents in the water um, are not um, a risk to the crew at the levels that, that we see today. Um, so we are reaching the limit where we would say we'd stop using the water processor. Um, I expect that we have some flexibility in that uh, number, and we'll be working that over the next little while because we know what the constituents are specifically that are um, making the uh, total organic uh, number go up uh, higher. Um, and so I expect we have some more runtime left on that uh, the water processor. Uh, if we don't use the water processor, we actually the water situation is uh, about like the food. It can last a little bit longer than the food. Uh, so if we have no water processor at all, we're, we're okay on water as well. Uh, the HTV itself is uh, loaded heavily with water, so we'll get quite a bit when the HTV shows up. And uh, again, the progress is bringing up water. Unfortunately for us, this was the second set of multi-filtration beds that we lost, and uh, we, we just don't have that fast of a pipeline, so the, uh, the team is off building up the next set of, of uh, multi-filtration beds. Uh, I doubt very seriously we'll have them ready in time for the um, August flight of the uh, HTV, um, but we'll work really hard and see how quickly we can get them to orbit. But again, the situation, like I said, is... Um, we're, we're in good shape because we store quite a bit of processed water on board as well uh, to protect for this, uh, this particular anomaly. Thank you. 